I've been taught a lot of things about speeches. Structure, types of communication, even grammar. And I like to think I've taught others a few tricks myself. But regardless of who teaches who, there's one key factor that everybody will tell you about. Make a difference. Create an impact. Make sure that by the end of your speech, by the time you are done speaking, something, at least one thing, no matter how small, has changed in the mind of the audience members. I have this memory really, really far back when I was really young. Not that I'm not young anymore, but I was a kid then. And my mom asked me, what do you think the meaning of life is? And as a kid, I also had zero idea about any of that stuff. And it also really pissed me off because as a kid, I hated not knowing things. But I didn't dwell on it too much, obviously. I had a lot of more other important things to do. Growing up, we are taught a lot of things. We are taught how to read, how to write, how to socialize, how to act around people, how not to act around people, what to say, when to say things. But one thing that nobody teaches us is kindness. Of course, they do teach us how to use it. What does that mean? Well, you learn when to offer someone a hand, when to offer your shoulder for someone to cry on, when to hug someone or hold their hand. And nobody questions that. We, we see that now. I think we see that as social etiquette which is not good, because we never question what we're told, don't we? But I'm going to ask you, though, who here thinks they're a generally kind person? Raise your hands, please, if you think you're a generally kind person. OK, great. A lot of people, a lot of generally kind people. And who here can recall at least one situation when their first impulse was not reacting with kindness? One, two, three, four, there, five. Awesome, it's normal, you know, it's okay, I do that too. It's only human. Again, socially, we are taught to keep our kindness under control or to keep tabs on kindness, if you will. Don't let them see they've hurt you. Always keep your chin up. Don't turn your ear to something you were not supposed to hear or don't upset if you hear something you weren't supposed to hear. Because we are expected to act as an elephant is expected to act in a china shop. Never extend your arms too wide, or be careful when you do so, because if it happens to break something, you don't want to cut yourself too deep, don't you? That's just how we are, you know? Because, because I think that's the only way to survive, actually. And I agree with that. I do think that, because this is a society I too live in. But I'm gonna ask you the next question. What would happen if we would start defying these rules that we have created? What would happen if instead of passing bricks to each other for our next walls to be built higher, even higher up than they are already, we would gently lower them, one brick by one brick. Instead of passing them to you, to you, I would take those bricks away from you prevent you? And obviously the answer we're all thinking is, well, because people are going to take advantage of us. And I'm going to ask you again, why? Why is our false Im first impulse to think that we are only just seen as means to an end? Why are we as people so, so scared of, well, other people? I said people twice. Because that is the only way we all have in common here, human nature. And more precisely, the way it all binds us together. Because as we witnessed earlier, we, most of us, believe we are generally kind people. But notice how I don't think all of us are kind enough, have the enough amount of kindness to actually change something in this world, to create some change. Think what would happen if we would have that. Let's see some problems that we all face today. Let's take racism, for example. How did we manage to let? Because 
we did let it happen. How did we manage to let the color of someone's skin change anything about that person? Or more precisely, why does the color of someone's skin get to decide if that person is worthy of kindness or not? It shouldn't, but it does. Sometimes I think we all struggle with the concept of kindness and it is a big word, it is a wide concept and we struggle to gather everything that sits behind it and it's normal, I did that too. But if we cut it down into really, really small pieces, we can think about certain ramifications that we use every day, like empathy or empowerment. We feel bad for a dog that's hurt, don't we? That's empathy. We all share at least one post about female empowerment or social minorities empowerment. That's born from kindness. And we don't think twice about these things. We do them every day. They're habitual, so habitual to us that we even love doing them. But if we would stop for a second and let ourselves realize how much these things, how much kindness is in our DNA and how much we could use that to create a better world as cliche as it sounds. We could start teaching each other and we could start educating ourselves into understanding how can things really change. And maybe years from now, not today, not tomorrow, but years from now, a brand new generation of all emotional educated people would live on this earth and could actually create a significant impact on problems such as racism or even homophobia. Coming from this perspective, I know and I see that change has now become a huge part of kindness and kindness is now seen as a huge change. But it's because we're so used of living in fear of each other. We are so used of fearing what can one person take from me or what can this person do if I open up too much to them. Aren't we all scared of that? We're scared of being vulnerable and we're scared of showing too much vulnerability to each other because we believe that we're protecting ourselves from damage instead of depriving ourselves of potential happiness. We are scared that by shutting the door straight up into someone's face, we protect ourselves and we do not deprive of potential chances to have a relationship with them or to be seen differently by them. There's actually a really, really nice poem I love about an author I wish more people could hear about. And it sounds something like this. A candle is a beautiful thing. She burns and casts light and long sweet shadows. She sweetens your feature with the soft glow of a fire that only burns for everything else except herself. Wax drips down her own body, stripping her of minutes. Minutes that were never hers to give, but kept inside her last moments illuminating everything else in the world, except herself. Of course. Of course, we all are scared to be candles. Of course, we all are scared to light for everything else except ourselves, because in a world full of economical light bulbs and LED lights, how could someone take the leap and be a candle? How could someone do anything for anyone else except themselves? It would look strange, the sweet yellow light of a candle. It would look so strange in this whole world of so painfully white lights. But think about how living in a house only lit by candlelight would be, how warm and how cozy that house would feel the warmth a candle and the love a candle living in such a house would feel, the love a candle that she has this love from all other candles that are only burning for everything else except themselves. It only takes the spark of kindness and the courage of bravery and the strength of bravery to keep these walks warm. 
Now I'd like to go back in time and answer my mom's question. And what I would say, I think, would be the meaning of life is making any kind of difference you can, no matter how small, no matter how big, from the deepest ones to the more shallower ones, make a difference by being a bit kinder for a bit longer, by being a bit kinder today or tomorrow for a bit longer, by trying to live in a world of candles, by trying to be the first candle. But doing that, you need to be the first one to light up. Now, I think I did a pretty good job with my speech. I honestly think so. I liked everything I said. I liked how I delivered. I didn't stir too much, which is good. But did I have that key factor? Did I make a difference? Well, that's only up to you, but I sure hope I did. Thank you. <laughs>